What's good, Mel? How you feeling today, man? These boys out here taking them hell, cooling with the babies. <laughs> they out here hooping though. That's you call learning the hoop. Just keep. <laughs> they ain't care about none of that. Oh, they got some new bills. Huh? <laughs> ain't they ain't that good though. That shit changed the name to Team to Team Free. Back. Good shot. Good try. Good shot. Thank you. Green. <laughs> How often do they do that? <laughs> it must be a lot, man. He put it in the bottom. Yeah, I done made a, damn, I done made a couple of people fall. Man, they got to do better than that. The rebound. Good pass. Rebound. Green. Uh. Ain't no way, man. They on the squad. We gotta get violated, man. My boy said, what's the point of playing this game? It's like the rest of it. And he do YouTube. <laughs> you going back to the different face cam? When the face cam back up? Uh, nah, I'll probably just be, be my face. You talking about the face cam effect? Nah, I'll probably not do it for a while. The pass. The box out. You think they uh, touch shooting? I'm starting to green more shots. Nah, I just think you done put in your time and you found your shot. I don't think they touch shooting because uh, as you seen the other game, I still was out there bricking. I was one for three. I made the big one. But yeah, I don't think that. Uh, then again, I don't know. <laughs> you doing shit like that. You think they touched it though, old head? Man, what is he shooting? He missed. The shot. The box. Get angle for the rebound. Good shot. Got him. He said it's easier. I've been shooting with the stick more though. Yeah, a lot of people were saying that rhythm shooting, ry rhythm shooter, shooting is better. So shooting with the stick, they say, is better than shooting with square. So I don't know. 
I hope they didn't mess with shooting. Because the game just come down to getting better, man. That's what it really come down to, putting in that time. The more you play, the more shots you're going to know, which, you, you know, the more shots you're going to know that you can take. You're going to feel it. You know when you, you can feel that shot. It ain't no. It don't count towards our record. So that's good. <laughs> I don't think nobody care about that. Not on the <laughs> the dealer. Man, they gotta stop it, man. <laughs> that shit crazy. <laughs> Yo, people are just too creative in the wrong thing. Right, bro, imagine, man. That's crazy. <laughs> Damn, that's funny. All right, it's a pretty court, though. I like that blue track. Um, kid, boo. That's fire. It's switch. We can live with it. All right, focus. Switch. Come on, you gotta see that. Good, good, good catch up. All right. Focus. Good try. Good defense. He think he playing pro well. Good shot. That's green. Good teamwork. Yeah, that's a stop. That's a stop. Good teamwork. That's all. For real. Good teamwork. Green. Good rebound. Green. Fuck you, 2K. There you go. Yo, you can really get out here and start missing, dog. I like that. I ain't gonna lie. I fuck with it, man. I like the missing part. I like the missing part. He <laughs> <We> shot that. <laughs> you ass, man. Green. Yo. Come on now. I don't like it that much. No way. No way he finna force this, dog. <laughs> oh, shit. He got some. <laughs> man, this shit gotta stop. That's crazy. Get the three. Get them over. Get them out of here. I don't like that. I need to go to new games. So I can get my shooters. Get some high spots. Ah, <laughs> uh, damn. <laughs> That's funny. E boy is tough. Good shot. That's green. <laughs> Yo, it's crazy because I can see it, bro. Right. That's a good shot. Man, they just can't shoot. 
Green. Go out of bounds. And you got that. Uh, you get that. You can do it. <laughs> That's tough. Mm, mm, mm. They really not passing, bruh. Hard to get my takeover ability here thinking about changing it. Nah, it's, it's taking long for everybody to get their takeover, bruh. Don't even waste your time on changing it. Like, if you just got it, it takes 15 games. So you gotta play 15 games before you can unlock it. They do this as well. Green. Yeah, them boys need to go back. They might be the dealer. The one playing like that. I mean, I unlocked it. I can't get it in game. Oh, that's on your team then. The takeover is not just on you anymore. It's a team takeover. It's a chemistry takeover. Yeah, so if you get your takeover, it based on all how y'all playing as a team. It's not an individual takeover no more. Unless you playing the ones. Right, it go fast. It go up faster as a team, though, because it's a chemistry takeover. It's not like a personal takeover. It's based off how the chemistry is on the on the floor. What's up, YouTube? Welcome to the Six Figure Morning Show, where we give you the best advice in business and life. Good morning, guys. Hope you slept well. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey. This morning, we're going to talk about your credit score, what it is, how to build it, how it drops, how it rises, how it works for you, you know, just what it does overall. And we're also going to talk about budgeting, how to create a proper budget. These are two easy subjects. They're very easy to talk about. Uh, I know. So this video may not be too long, but I am going to stay until I get my point across. They... um. There are plenty of videos on topics like this on the internet. I cut the fluff, guys. I'm just being honest with you. I cut out all the bullshit. Okay, so if that's what you need, then this probably won't be the one for you. If you need some real visualiza visualization, like a whiteboard and things, I don't see any sense in it. I think most of you, I, I think you guys, most of you guys are smart enough to be able to handle this on your own. So uh, what is a credit score? I think I want to say this because I am talking to the masses. I, I want you guys to remember I am talking to a wide variety of men, women, black, white, Asian. Uh, uh, I have people over in Africa listening to me. I have people in Uruguay, Ghana, uh, India, uh, Canada, Russia, England, Ireland, El Salvador. I have people all over the United States in various situations listening to me. OK, so let's touch on that real fast. I cannot. Guys, you need to understand, take what you need and leave the rest. Take what you need and leave the rest. Some things I say may not pertain to you. They just may not. I'm sorry. But when you read my comment section, I have people that are commenting that they're homeless living in their cars. I have young women telling me that they just had their first child and the father wants nothing to do with it. I have young boys telling me that they're now on child support and they're 21 years old. I have young men telling me they're couch hopping, that they have nowhere to go. You understand? I have older women trying to figure out how they can retire. I have people asking me what to do with a quarter million dollars. Do you understand? I'm talking to the masses. If you need me to specifically tailor and cater to you, then schedule a one-on-one -on -one coaching. I'm very cheap. I am very cheap and I know my shit. I am very cheap right now. I'm trying to get my name out there and my business out there. I am very cheap. So you're getting in on the ground floor. The price will rise. 
It's going to go up, I promise. But right now, I am very cheap. So if you need me to cater and tailor your spe to your specific needs, feel free to reach out to me through Instagram or Facebook for one-on-one -on -one coaching. Working on the website, working on all these things, it takes time, but it will come in the near future. Feel free to reach out to me through those platforms and we can do one-on-one -on -one coaching. We can do a video call. We can do a teleconference call, however you want to do it. Everything's everything you tell me is private, is personal, and never gets repeated to anybody. I, I it just doesn't. It never gets repeated. It's it's never talked about amongst anybody. Your financial business, your divorce, whatever, it's your business. So, uh, anyways, just please keep that in mind. And the guys, keep that in mind. I'm talking to the masses. So, what is your credit score? Your credit score is an imaginary number that the banking system gave you. Listen to me. It is an it's an imaginary number that the banking system gave you to see how likely you are to repay a loan. It is to see how trustworthy you are because they do not know you individually. They don't know. Oh, that's Bob. He, he, he's good. Oh, that's Sarah or Sally. They're great. They don't know. So this little number, this little three digit number verifies that you're good or that you're great. That's all it is. That is all it is. It is going to dictate what type of interest rate you get. Interest is the money that you pay back on a loan. So let's say that I get a 10% interest rate or let's just be real. I get, I don't know, a 13% interest rate. Let's just say that, you know, you, it's what it is. You're getting a 13% interest rate. 10% is real as well. I don't know why I switched that, but you're getting a 13% interest rate. If you borrow $100, then you have to pay back $113. If you borrow $1,000, then you have to pay back $1,130. You get it? That's what your interest rate is. So when you see that, you need to think of you need to think of that. So when you go to a car lot and they try to slide in a 30% interest rate, then you need to look at that in the long term effects of everything and realize how much you're going to be paying over the price. So you have your price and then you have your interest. You have your principal, which is your price, and then you have your interest. So you need to be able to say, hey, man, yeah, I'm a, I know I'm about to pay 30,000 principal on this car, but I also have a 25 percent interest rate. What's 25 percent of 30? The fastest way I do that in my head is 50 percent of 30 is 15. So that means I'm getting ready to. And then you get it What's 25 percent. What's 50 percent of 15 It's about 7500. Right. So it's that's just the fast way I do it. So that means that I'm going to pay thirty seven thousand five hundred roughly. You know what I'm saying? I'm paying seven thousand over what the sticker is with that interest rate. I hope that makes sense. I'm trying to, you know, 4 a.m. I'm, I'm hoping I'm making sense. But back to the credit score, I'm going to get away from interest rates and back to the credit score. Your credit score is an imaginary number that the banking system gave you. This is what I tell people because this is real. When I was homeless and I had nothing and I had to figure everything out for myself, I looked around society. I, I deleted all forms of social media. I completely disappeared from the world. And I looked around at everything around me and what people were doing and how they were all just marching around like good little soldiers and listening to what everybody was telling them to do, especially especially during the C-19. I was watching all this stuff and I just didn't conform. I didn't have anything to lose anyway. So, I mean, you know, I didn't care. I didn't care if, if Paul Revere rode through town. The British are coming. I didn't give a shit. I didn't have nothing. So I was sitting there and I was looking around and I was like, all this is fake. Like all of this is made up just to keep your wheel spinning and keep the financial system moving. It keeps that big old money wheel turning. I was like, this is all fake. And that's when I started looking at everything. And I was like, man, your credit score is really fake. It's 100% fake. But do you need it? Yeah, you need it. You need it just like you need a debit card now, just like you need cash now. Just I mean, you need it. And sooner or later, yes, you're going to need some form of CBD seed and Bitcoin or something. Yeah. You need it. If you want to function in society, you need a credit score. If you want to disappear off the grid or whatever, you don't need a credit score. You don't need that at all. You just need to secure a plot of land and go. Then go. So your credit score 
is an imaginary number that the banking system gave you to see how reliable you are to repay a loan. It fluctuates. It goes up and downs, highs, lows, peaks, valleys. It will always go up and down. If you stay on top of it, if you properly manage it, if you're going down this road of wealth creation, then you should properly manage this. It should be part of your at least a weekly routine, guys. Guys, I check my stuff every day. OK, I not necessarily credit, but I look at my overall financial portfolio every day, sometimes two or three times a day. All right. I enjoy doing it. I enjoyed this, but this needs to become a daily habit or at least at least. Bare minimum, a weekly habit to where you sit down every Monday morning or Friday night and you look over your entire financial. So I don't care where you're at. I don't care if you are broke. I don't care where you're. Listen, something else I want to. I don't care where you're at, but you need to study and look at your financial situ situation every day. But let's take a minute to touch on this. I saw a young lady in the comment section and she said that uh, I'm so poor and yada, yada, yada. Some other things. Listen to me. Listen, all of you, you are not poor. You are broke. Broke is monetary. Poor is mindset. A broke man, a broke woman can make more money. A poor man, a poor woman cannot. You understand? Broke is monetary. Broke is money. Poor is mindset. You're not poor. You're just broke. How do we make more money? Stop the negative self-talk. Stop the self-doubt. Let's execute. Let's get a plan. Let's execute. Let's stay positive. Yes, you're just broke. It sucks. I've been there many times and I don't want to go back. <laughs> so I, I'm serious. I, but, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. I tell that story about Thomas Durant, you know, building the railroad, becoming a billionaire and then freezing to death in New York. You know what I'm saying? He died broke and probably poor. It probably depressed him that bad to where his mental health declined and the man probably died broke and poor. I could see that happening. And uh, if it happens to me, I'm going to embrace it because I'm so into my own story. I'm so into my own journey. If I woke up and lost everything after creating a hundred million dollar net worth, I would be so depressed and poor about it. But I would embrace the life that I lived. I really would. I mean that. So um, anyways, but that is your credit score. It, it fluctuates. It goes up and down. It is an imaginary number that the banking system created just for you. It is attached to your social security number. It is an imaginary number that they created just for you that tells them how reliable you are to repay a loan or repay a debt or any money borrowed. That's all it is. It will fluctuate. It will go up and down. If you properly manage this thing, if you start to manage your portfolio, your own, you have to become the CEO of your own life. If you start to properly manage your finances, guys, I don't care what you do. I don't care if you work at McDonald's and I don't care if you're the CEO of a Fortune 500 company. You need to be properly managing and looking at your finances. I look at mine daily. I understand if your bank account is empty, then I get it. You don't want to keep looking at it because there's nothing there. I 100 percent get it. Or maybe you do want to keep looking at it because there's nothing there and allow it to motivate you to get up and get something. You're going to have to take action to have something, guys. You're going to have to take action to have something. You cannot just sit on the couch and wishfully think you cannot put on freaking money affirmations on YouTube and go to sleep and think that you're going to wake up 888 bullshit. It ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen, guys. I wish it was that simple. I wish it was. I wish the universe was all giving. I really do. And it is. But you got to take action. The universe will give you what you want out of this life, but it's going to put you through the ringer. It's going to beat the hell out of you. It's going to. It's going to ask you, how much do you want it? How bad do you really want this life? And it's going to beat the shit out of you. And then you're going to wake up and be like, holy hell, I took the hits. I took the punches. You have to become a millionaire. You have to become a millionaire before you ever have a million dollars. You get it? We, we on the same page, guys. I've made a lot of content about this type of stuff. You have to become a millionaire before you ever have a million dollars up here. 
Because if I handed you a million dollars right now, what are you going to do with it? You're going to go buy something. You're going to go spend it all. You're going to go waste it. What are you going to do with it? How are you going to grow it? Most people don't. Why do you think a lot of people that hit the lottery end up broke? Because they have no idea. They're, they did not have the mindset for a million dollars, guys. So, again, your credit score is an imaginary number that the banking system gave you to see how likely you are or how reliable you are to repay a loan. It will fluctuate. It will go up and down. I do not hang my hat on a credit score. I have great credit. My credit is uh, the high 700s. I have great credit, but I have a trifecta. I have great credit. I have uh, a great uh, income work history, three to five years of work history. I actually have five to seven years of work history um, and I have cash. So you really ideally want a trifecta. You need to look at these three things and realize what I'm saying. You need credit, work history, and cash. That's it. And that right there is going to put you in the game on whatever level or whatever you're trying to do. A trifecta of credit, work, and cash. Verifiable income is work. Trifecta. That's going to throw you in the game to almost whatever you're trying to do on your level. The more credit you have, the more income you have, and the more cash you have will allow you to rise quickly in this game. You will be able to walk in the bank. Let's say that you have a perfect credit score. It doesn't have to be perfect, but high set, mid, mid to high 700s. Let's say that you have seven to 10 years of making sixty-five dollars to $100,000 a year. And let's say you have 100000 cash. You can walk into that bank with your head held high and say, I need this, this, and this. And they're going to look at you and say, all right, we'll, we'll take a shot. You understand? So last time, man, your credit score is an imaginary number that the banking system gave you to see how likely or reliable you are to repay a loan. It will fluctuate. It will go up and down. There's guys, I, I could beat this into you like beating a dead horse. It will go up and down. And the reason I don't hang my hat on a credit score is the fact that I have great credit now. And as soon as I make a mistake, say I lose my job, say I get sick, say I fall ill, say I catch cancer. As soon as that happens to me and I can't work for six months and my credit and I, I, I fall behind on bills, it will drop drastically. They don't give a fuck about you. I don't know where I'm losing this in the comments. I don't know where I'm losing this in the crowd out there, but they don't care about you. You go catch cancer today and you freaking can't pay your bills for the next six months and you start to fall behind on the car payment and the credit score. And I mean, the car payment and the freaking credit cards and all these things that score that you babied so much. That you kept precious to you like Gollum from Lord of the Rings. And you're precious, you're baby, and you babied it. You will watch it go from a great perfect score down to nothing. All because you got sick and ill. They do not care. That's why I don't hang my hat on a credit score. That's why I tell you to be cash heavy. Okay? Ideally, you want a trifecta. Please understand the trifecta. Ideally, you want great credit job history and freaking cash if i caught cancer today the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to run through my credit i'm going to take everything i can from them understand this understand this if i caught stage four cancer today and i knew i had like three months or six months to live i'm selling everything i'm running through my credit i'm borrowing every damn dollar i can and i'm cashing out and I'm going to give my sons a bag of cash. I'm not going to leave them with fucking problems and debt and bills. I'm going to hit them with a duffel bag of cash. Here, motherfucker, daddy loves you. It's, it's the God's honest truth. Now, if you got massive equity, massive wealth, things of that nature, that is a different scenario. But to your average W-2 employee that has been trying to do everything right and they're only making 65 grand a year and all these little things and you got a small trifecta, that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing. I'm getting I'm cleaning it all out. I'm getting rid of everything. I'm cleaning out and I'm giving my boys cash so they can move on, move forward in their own personal lives to whatever they want to do. I'm going to leave this earth free and clear. Am I making sense? But now if you're a major business owner or you have multiple rental properties, things like that, you already know I'm not talking to you. 
I'm not talking to you because now you need to be looking at trust and you need to be looking at everything else, guys. My channel, this show is the six figure morning show. It is to help people get from a low income to their first six figures. My book is called Your First Hundred Thousand. If you need me to cater to you, you know, you're sitting on a quarter million or however you're looking at franchising, you're looking at rental properties, things like that. Got no problem with it. Schedule a one on one. I can handle all that. I, but right now, I like talking to the younger people that need help. I really like talking to those people and helping them because I'm trying to make them understand and see how things really go, see how the world really works. So that's the reason I don't hang my hat on credit, guys, because anything could happen to you and they will drop your scores just like your employer. Your employer, you go get hurt, you go, you go something, man, anything. You get sick, your dog's about to die. You tell them you need a couple days off to take care of the dog. We can't do that. We can't, we can't go with that. Then, you know, it's things like that, guys. That's why I tell you to get cash heavy. That's why I tell you to be cash heavy. It works. So you want to try FECTA. Ideally, you want to try FECTA, but cash heavy really works. Cash heavy is really smart and responsible. The trifecta is what you want. The trifecta. That's what you need to aim for. Credit score, job history, and cash. Those three things right there, you want it. I love a trifecta. You guys know it, and that's what you want. And that right there, you're playing the game. You're in it. You can go do whatever. If you can get those three things, if you can get a trifecta, you can go buy a car, a home. You can start flipping houses. You can you can go and get a small line of credit, depending on your income. There's all kinds of things you can do with a trifecta, guys. A trifecta is what you want to shoot for. Good credit, job history, and cash. You want those three things. And these things, these are things that I've made up. These are things that I have made up myself. I don't know, you know, nothing anymore is original. I don't know if anybody in history or something has talked about stuff like this. I don't know. But for me, I never have heard it. These are things that I have made up because I do get comments from time to time about, oh, it sounds like such and such and such. God, nothing's original anymore. It's like get rich or die trying. You know what I'm saying? 50 Cent might have coined it. All you younger people might have might know about it from him. But I guarantee you back in 1340 A.D., there were pirates selling the ocean, screaming, get rich or die trying. I guarantee it somewhere there were there were pirates selling the ocean. There were Vikings coming across the freaking water talking about getting rich or die trying. You know what I'm saying? Like there are those things. I mean, come on, guys. It's it, 50 cent might have coined it or whatever. Or, you know, you guys talk about Coach Greg Adams with the meat. I was I don't believe it was meat. I really believe it was something like eat or something. But I was hearing that shit in the 90s. I might have been Tony Robbins. They used to say stuff like that. Like that stuff's been around. But, you know, it takes one person just like somebody's probably coined cash heavy. But you guys are hearing it from me. And if I keep on repetitively uh, repetition, beating it into you, you guys will be like, well, Robert Edson's cash heavy. He's cash heavy. You understand? But somebody else in the past probably did it. And I don't know about them, but I'm sure they did. It's a, it's, it's a very common term. You get it? So, yeah. But right now, as of right now, I don't know anybody else doing it. So, I hope that's explained your credit. You guys need to rewind back a little bit, watch it a little more. But that's all it is. Your credit score is an imaginary number that the banking system gives you to see how uh, likely or reliable you are to repay a loan. That's exactly what it is. Make sure that thing was still on. He's saying, man, that's exactly what it is. Um, just to see how likely you are, reliable you are to repay a loan. It will fluctuate. I, you do need credit because you need to survive in society, but you do not need to hang your hat on credit. Credit is only there to allow you to borrow money. So if you don't know how to leverage debt, if you don't understand that leveraging debt, you don't need to be out there borrowing money. You don't need to be out there maxing out your credit to any young man or woman that does not understand these things. You need to get cash happy. I don't care what anybody says in the comments. I don't give a shit what anybody says in the comments. If you're 19, 21 years old, you do not need to be focused on credit. You need to be cash heavy. OK, cash heavy at that young age. And then you spend, you know, say you're 19 years old and you just get cash heavy till you're 25. You just stack cash. Brother, you're in the game. You're in the game. Hands down. The bank's going to look at you like this kid's smart. He just needs direction on the paperwork side. He needs. Yeah, you're in the game. 
And I think a lot of people that have money would agree with me that if you're very young, you don't even need to be worried about credit. You don't need to use it. You just need to go to work, live on your income and stack cash, stack cash for future investments. You need to be educating yourself, but you do not need to be pulling credit because at a young age, you're pulling credit for what you're pulling credit for a car, which is a very negative asset. It is a sinkhole. All right. If you have to use credit to buy a car, you probably can't afford it. I tell you guys all the time, if you can't buy it twice, you can't afford it Guys, I'm an old man. And I, I talk about that stuff. If you can't buy it twice, you can't afford it. And I even look at that almost to housing. I understand that's a big twice. I understand that. That's a big times too. But it's almost true. If you scrape up, scrounge around for pennies and dollars to buy a house, when something happens to that house, how are you going to be able to fix it? And then somebody's going to say, well, I've got homeowner's insurance. Yeah, you sure do. Sure, sure. Truth still stands. The fact of the matter is you've spent all your money to buy a house and now you have no money to maintain that house. Buying a home is not an asset, guys. It's a liability. Buying a single family house is a liability. The only way I'm going to buy a single family home is if I eventually get to my dream home and I'm done and I'm just I'm not moving again. Not saying I'm retiring, but I'm not moving again. My dream home is personal to me. And the only way that I'm buying any single family anything is if I get that and I'm not retiring. I'm not retiring. I'm just not moving again. I'm going to live there until I pass away. That's the only way. Other than that, then the first income property I would be looking at is going to be a duplex. That's the first income property I'm going to be looking at is either a duplex or if I'm on a very low income and I'm really just starting out, I'm going to look at renting trailers until or, you know, I'm looking at renting trailers until I can build up. I don't really like the trailer deal, but, you know, that's something you got to do your own due diligence on. Um, I've done the trailer deal years ago just to kind of build my income because you can buy trailers for five, ten thousand dollars, clean them up a little bit and turn around and make another five off of them. It, 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 it's fast. I bought a trailer cash. I don't remember what year this was, it's maybe 16, maybe. I bought a trailer cash, cleaned it up and turned around. I bought it for seven cash and I turned around at one time. Uh, yeah, I think this was 2016. I bought a trailer for seven cash. I might have put like five into it. So say I'm 12 all in and I sold it for 18. You know what I'm saying? I made, And dude, I did all this in like two months, like 60 days. I flipped that money in like 60 days. So that's why I tell you guys to operate in cash. There are people saying that, you know, it takes six months. Like where are you buying houses that it takes you six months to close the deal? I don't know. I don't I'm not knocking you. I've just never take it's never taken me that long to do anything. So when you operate in cash and you buy things for cash money and it's already paid for, all you have to do is do a transfer of title. That's it. I, I don't I don't know where you got. I don't know. I, I don't. So I can't speak to that because I've never had to do that. I've never bought anything. And it took me, you know, six months to close anything. The Honestly, the God's honest truth, the longest it takes is for them to mail you your title or your deed for you to get your information. That's the longest process. But to actually transfer one item to another, one thing to an, one person to another. You guys, blah, blah. And to actually transfer one thing between hands, between two people, that transfer process is not that long when you're dealing with cash. It's very, very quick. As long as everybody's in agreement, it's very quick. The, the longest process is dealing with your local and state uh, government to send you over all your paperwork. That's the longest process. But the actual transfer itself, it's very quick. Um, sorry to jump off topic like that, but I, I just wanted to say that. So we've, we've covered the credit score. I hope you guys completely get, uh, get that. <clears throat> That's it. Daddy, daddy. Huh? Daddy, daddy. 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 Daddy, daddy.